Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donachey. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donachey. Hi, good evening or good afternoon, wherever we, wherever you're listening to from. Um, my name's Matthew Donachey um, and co-host this evening again is Adam Weller. So just give him a chance to introduce himself. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. Yeah, it uh, looks like it's going to be a good one tonight. Really interesting subject. Yeah, I think it's uh, close to a lot of people's hearts. Um, and on this evening's show, we'll be discussing how um, post-traumatic stress disorder is at an epidemic level. Um, it's been known, obviously, within the emergency services and within veterans uh, for a long time, but it's very much now... Uh, rife within the general populace. Um, certainly something I've had um, a mild experience of um, and also Adam's had an experience of in his life. Um, but what's also interesting f for both of us as well um, is certainly up working with, with clients that have been working with it as well. And it's it's such a such a wide variety of people can can suffer from PTSD um, because it can only take it only takes one one really really traumatic situation to happen in your life um, that can create so many effects um, maybe not straight away even months or even years later um, and for me that was having a motorcycle accident um, and what I didn't realise at the time is the it was only really when I became emotionally aware that I realised I, I I was even suffering. And I would say you don't know you're suffering until until you realise. Or, or for me, because although it was a a, a close call and a, there were times within the accident you think, thank God I'm alive. Um, you had the thoughts of Oh my god! Oh my god! I could have died. I could have been killed there. Um, however, if you've had a a lot of those experiences, obviously with the veterans, it, everything is just sort of personified. Um, so for me, as I was saying, it's only really when I became aware of my emotions that I I actually realised some of the symptoms that I I had had for a few years, which was I. I I, I've always been quite an active dreamer, um, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware that a lot of our dreams are, are relative to what's going on um, and can be pointing out traumatic times within our lives. Um, and it was sort of the waking up in the middle of the night, sort of with the, for me, when, when I had the, when I was knocked off my motorbike, the first thing I remember is a bang. Then I remember seeing a white panel um the next image because i'm sure a lot of you are aware when you when you have an accident it's like everything slows down and it's like being at a, a slideshow so rather than a fast action movie it turns into an old slideshow so for me i just got very select images and one of them that always woke me up in the dream was when i was when i was knocked off someone pulled out um, I was overtaking traffic, um, quite legally, I should state, um, and pulled out and just clipped my bike. And I, I flew across the other lane. And I remember seeing the other, the other lane of traffic upside down and having the thought, thank, thank God nothing's coming. Because if something was, that, that would have been me wiped out. Um, and you think one one experience like that um, caused me to I wasn't as confident on bikes um, anymore. I I didn't enjoy it as much. Um, 
you sort of you still enjoy it but it's almost like selectively enjoying it so when it was an open straight road and there was nothing around then it was all right you you feel safe but the moment you're in traffic it's like you're on that hyper hyper alert um, and this is where a lot of sort of like the emergency services and, and, and veterans where, where they've seen a huge amount of trauma in different situations. Um, you, you, you have so many more sort of flashbacks and it's kind of you, you, you're very much in fight or flight mode a lot of the time. Um, when you have a traumatic experience, the 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 brain or or your body goes in is responding to to a threat ultimately um and goes into what we call fight or flight mode um at which point the body would dump huge amounts of adrenaline um and it's like your your brain gets stuck in danger mode um or or fear mode as we would say so it's it's false evidence appearing real so just because something's bad happened to you once, it doesn't mean that every time you're in that situation, you're going to have the same outcome and, and you're going to get hurt. But that's not what the brain tells you. Um, so it's like on a, a constant hyper alert. Um, so for me, I, 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 that resonates with me when I when I was doing that same thing, um, because it was, it was a yes, it was an accident and. And I, I could have been seriously hurt, but I wasn't. And you sort of pick yourself up and you you get on the bike, not straight away, obviously, but at a certain point you make the decision that, no, you've got to get over this and, and carry on. But it was only when it, really when I did um, the emotional release with, with Breath for Life Breathwork that I really gained the the understanding around it and being able to heal that situation emotionally um, and gain the clarity around actually what really went on um, I was actually really able to enjoy getting on a motorcycle again and not having that constant fear around well what if something happens um, because when certainly when you're doing something you love the last thing you want to be doing is is feeling fear you want to be feeling the joy that's 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 why you do it um so for me in 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 a in a very small way but in in, in a significant way i was able to deal with with mine um and i think adam has a a, a bit more of an extreme example but it's it's amazing how when i looked into we were doing the show and uh that was the situation that it showed up in my life and I thought well that's just one situation and I'm sure we can all put our hands up and say you've had one or, or maybe a few situations within your life where you've been in an incredible amount of danger within a situation um, you think my heart goes out to the, the, the vets and the emergency services that probably see that on a daily basis um, and that's why I think it's it's growing or it, it's becoming more of a thing because we we very much live in a more extreme world. There, there's more of more of us around, so there's more of us having accidents and having traumatic experiences. So I think it, it's very much amplified in in today's world, especially alongside with the mental health. So um, just handing over to Adam and allowing him to share his story. Yeah, um, absolutely, and uh, that was one of the things that really sort of stood out for me when me and Matthew was talking about the show and, and PTSD and sort of both, you know, sharing our experiences, just how many similarities there are between what we went through in our own right. Um, so, and and it's, you know, the, the traumatic event is, is almost irrelevant, you know, um, for Matthew it was... Obviously, the, the bike accident for me, uh, being a car mechanic, I had a car fall on top of me while I was working under it. Um, and, you know, I, I had the uh, the slow motion as such. Um, for me, initially when it happened, it was completely calm. Once I got out, then I fell to bits. Um, 
But then sort of moving, you know, moving on from that, it was then starting to notice how my behaviour had changed. Um, when it would come to working on cars, I wouldn't feel comfortable underneath them. Um, constantly, sort of, at every slightest noise or movement or twitch, I was, you know, I, I was twitching and, and moving and what's that? And is he going to fall? All this sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I remember there being times where I'd literally scrambled out from under the car because I thought it was going to happen again. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously the car was, was perfectly supported and, and all that sort of thing. It was just, you know, my mind taking me back to that time where, even though it was supported, the, you know, the support failed and, and the car fell on me. Um, and, and once again, it, it wasn't until I actually looked into it, because I got to the point where I stopped working on cars altogether. Um, I started off by making excuses for why I couldn't do this job or that job, uh, and ended up going and working on a building site, because that was easier than dealing with getting underneath a car. Mm. Um, but once again, when, when I decided that actually, no, I need to, you know, mechanics is my trade and, and that's where my skills are, and I needed to go back to that, um, I went, went to see Penny, who I've been using for Breath of Life, Breath Work for the, sort of the last seven or eight years, and it was very much going in specifically around this event and, okay, what's it all about and mm -hmm. why am I having the feelings the way that I am? to the extent I completely changed my life, my career, all that sort of thing, just to avoid this situation. Yeah. Um, and it was then when I then I realised, actually, when you look at the symptoms and how I was living and what my behaviour was showing me, every, you know, almost every symptom of, of PTSD. So you, you've got it and you don't even know it. You just yeah. tell yourself what you tell yourself and make best of of your life as you can yeah i think there's so many so many sayings especially in the uk that sort of man up's one of them and have a stiff upper lip and well you just you just got to crack on like time is a healer like you you got to get over it you you just, come on you just got to keep going and it's it's sort of uh, poison almost to to the mind because we we tell ourselves that we've got to get over it, whereas actually we we need to deal with it. Um, and obviously, I, we both found a very effective tool for dealing with the emotion around the situation. And we've both found, and certainly clients have found, that once you deal with the and, and drain the emotion around the situation, you've more than halved the trauma. So you're always going to have the bad memory, but it doesn't, it, there's no emotional attachment. So it's not this big, scary trauma you've got locked in your basement that you plan on never seeing. It's actually when you just drain the emotions, because very much around the traumatic situation, whether, whether you've had to deal with, and, and this is the thing, it's so varied. I could list, I could, tell you a list of reasons that people have PTSD but that would take half the show but I mean you've got you've got pregnancies the difficult pregnancies you um, you've got any traumatic experience any any sort of physical abuse you've got sort of rape any I mean some of the situations that emergency services have to deal with and and the firemen and even things that you see in your daily life that actually are horrendous you could see a car accident there's any number of things that you could witness that you think oh that was terrible and at the time you could think it doesn't affect you but actually all these things do affect us um, and I think that's why it became, has become such an e epidemic because it is a, a more extreme world now um, there's there's more people so again there's more situations to be witnessed and I think it's it, it, it's it's rife because people a lot of people are, are sort of struggling to understand it 
Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest frustrations that the veterans have is that they're struggling to identify with who they were when they came uh, when they came back from from tour, um, and they're trying to re-identify with who they were before, but they're completely different. So, how are they able to identify? And it it, it is such a a large subject, um, and I think as Adam was saying, a lot of people sort of struggle to understand it, and and, and for that reason, um, I think it was important to do a show and and to say that we're not we're not claiming we found a cure for it or anything like that. However, we've we've dealt with situations that involve PTSD, and certainly some of my my clients who have dealt with um, with rape issues with sort of abuse issues that have gone on over many years and 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 that's caused ptsd and it's something as i was saying if you deal with the emotion around it yeah you're always going to have the memory but the memories don't hurt when you've dealt with the emotion and most of the emotions you could break them down into into four really um and most of the emotions you're dealing with around PTSD is the the biggest straight off is is fear. Um, now that can be that can range from slightly scared to a, absolute terror um, when you, you you could be sure that you're going to die kind of thing. That it's that that bad. Um, and also there, there can be some mad in there uh, and some sad. Um, a lot of what people feel um, when they have PTSD is, other than the, the, the flashbacks and the panic attacks, it's the, the angry outbursts. Um, sometimes they can feel sort of numb, hopelessness, um, deep feelings of guilt and shame. Um, and looking at that, it's, it, it's interesting how these symptoms that are coming out are our key emotions connected with with traumatic experiences. So again, it just shows or just kind of backs up how I, how I can talk about it because it, it's what I've experienced and I've seen so many different people in different situations go through the same. Um, and it's using the same emotional tool um, and dealing with the emotion and then the memory just is. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. Memory. Memories are information rather than the, the trauma connected to the yeah. sort of memory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, because um, I know you're working with with a, a vet at the moment, and that's certainly big up for him. So, um, really looking forward to the next part of the show. Um, so. Keep listening and we'll speak to you after the break. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? 
No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Welcome back. Um, so I'd like to go on and, and just talk about um, actually some of the triggers. Um, so this is something that obviously I, I became aware of when I was riding my bike that I was more fearful. Um, but it's going into and, and I'm trying, just trying to understand a little bit more that actually um, I'm real passionate about helping um, vets because from what I've heard from my uh, clients that I that I've dealt with is that it can be such a, a huge thing and it can literally take over your life um, and my heart goes out to them because these are guys that have put their life on the line and put themselves in situations and this also remembering the the emergency services that do exactly the same um, and they go through these traumatic experiences and it's like that's their work life effectively and they go back into their what should be their personal life so when we leave the office or, or clinic or site or wherever you work it's like you you can leave your work at home and the issue is this you can't when you when you've when your job involves experiences like this and you've experienced a certain amount um, it, it's difficult to switch off to them because it just goes round and round and there's so many triggers um, that I've heard of like uh, even just loud banging do loud banging on doors um, I've had clients say that, that they almost they feel so disconnected from from life and people, it's um, it's they find it really, really scary um, because they're trying to get the person back that they remember, um, but there's so much in the way. It's like they can't remember. All they can remember is the stuff that's sort of in the middle, and it can f affect so many aspects of their life: um, sleep, relationships, behaviour. I mean it. It literally when you when you've experienced that amount of trauma or, or pain um, your behavior is going to be affected to such an extent that if your self-worth is low then you may not be performing at jobs so you wouldn't be able to keep a job so then that goes out the window and people can find themselves going downhill and there isn't necessarily sort of the understanding and as I said earlier I'm not I'm not claiming we've got a cure however I've seen many people deal with variations of PTSD and, and traumas using breath for life um, and that's very much again what we're when we were saying last week about there being mental health awareness it's uh, awareness is great and talking about things is also great However, taking action is is the way to go. Um, it's the way to go with climate change now. It's like we're at, we're at a point where we we have so many things to deal with, and they're not small issues now. Um, there's millions of people struggling with PTSD, and when you think there's that many people struggling, and actually there's not enough, maybe not enough being done for for these people um, regardless of your belief or anything like that um, I think it's worth 
giving anything a go. And if if somebody's sort of, if, if some of what we've said resonated with people, and you think, well, yeah, I haven't tried breath work. Maybe maybe I should try that. It's like do it. Um, you need to try and almost almost g people up and say, look, these, we've we've had situations and we've had clients that have had huge situations um, around PTSD to deal with. Um, I've had a, one of a, a friend of mine uh, who was a, a fireman for very many years and I won't share the whole story because it's pretty horrific but one of his weekly jobs for him and the guys at the station were to pick bodies up off the ground after they'd thrown themselves off one of the local buildings which was known for um, being a good jump spot so to speak and it literally sent chills through my body that somebody had to do that and they considered that one of their regular jobs like sweeping the floor and it really really did get me and I thought you know people we we, we need to help people here people really need to be sort of educated on look this people have been able to deal with it in this way so give it a try um and it's like don't don't give up because i know a lot of people with the feel or suffering with ptsd have the feeling of of giving up because they almost feel like nobody knows how to to deal with it and although some of the explanations are correct it just doesn't doesn't change anything um and sometimes talking about it um, can only make things worse for people because they find it brings things to the surface. And actually, that's the last the last thing they want is for it to be in running around their, their conscious mind the whole time. Um, so, again, that's, I think, why the work with, we do is, is so profound is that you, you're able to deal with the emotion and then the memory is, is just the memory you're, you're always going to have the memory but it's not going to have the the traumatic impact so it's dealing with the emotions that you didn't deal with when the trauma first happened um so is there anything you'd like to add to that adam yeah absolutely um for me it's like you know you, you have to sort of get off the merry-go-round um and, and i think it's sort of one of the one of the, the aspects, and, and don't get me wrong, there are many other sort of mental health issues that will do this sort of thing to you, but it's like, you know, you're you're ignoring the, the emotions around the initial trauma and event and adding more and more of that emotion, that anxiety or the, the utter terror, you know, whatever the sort of the emotion may be. And, and as you add more to it, then the, the symptoms are such heightened and the flashbacks and the this, the that, the other, become more and more. And it's, you know, for me, and, and especially in the line of work we do, you sort of you have to bring it back to the emotion every time because, when, you know, once you can clear them, you can get off of the ever-diminishing circle that's that you hear so many people say that they're just going down and down and down and they're, nothing's working, you know, and, and it is. And until you remove that anchor to the emotion and to, uh, sorry from the emotion to the event then you're not gonna clear the the thoughts and feelings around it because from my point of view especially with with the work that we do and how we look at things it's very much a case of well that that is just telling you what you need to work on and mm, what you yeah. need to to work out to move forward you know um because it, it is all about moving forward to have the best experiences in life you can you know um and uh, for for me especially sort of touching on sort of the uh, the services whether that be armed forces or you know your your medics or mm. you know it, it police or all of them really it's for a lot of the time it's you know they're just telling themselves but, it, but it's just my job it's just part of the job it's just part of the job and i think that's yeah it's it, like that one of those sayings they tell themselves isn't it it's kind of like oh well, it's just part of the job and it, it's just you just got to do it you just got to keep your keep your chin up and and do it 
yeah, it, it comes back to, to sucking it up, doesn't it? So, well, you, you, you suck it up and get on with it, you know. You chose to do that job. You, you could have been a window cleaner sort of thing. When it's like, well, you know, if that is sort of one of the byproducts of your job, then find a, a healthy way of dealing with that, you know. Yeah. Um, and this is the thing. I mean, there's, there's such empathetic people. When you, when you, when you think about it, um, what some of them have to go through and they tell themselves, well, it's part of the job and it, it's just what you do. It, it Actually, it's not. And there's a lot of people out there that probably couldn't do that job. And it just goes to show just how much empathy and unconditional love these people have for humanity that they will go above and beyond what most people could put themselves through and think nothing of it and see it as well it's just a job it's just something you do no it's not you you you're real life heroes you're doing incredible jobs to keep people safe and actually we need to give more help out um it's certainly something i do within my clinic i I knock off 20% um, to any work, anyone who works within the or has done worked in any emergency services or, or, or been in any of the armed uh, forces because it's just so important and I feel so so lucky that I'm able to live the, the life I am out of fear in joy knowing that if anything ever was to happen that you have people around you that that are willing to, to to help and I think again that's what sort of drives my passion to to get out that I think breath for life breath work would, would make a difference to so many lives um, because I, 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 I've seen it um, and I think a lot of the time it is about sort of almost like the first stage is that sort of people talking about it um, because a lot of people out there don't want to necessarily talk about it and this is because if you are suffering with PTSD you can have the feelings of sort of being a burden or, or, or feeling hopeless um, and the last thing you want is to express that um, because then by expressing that you feel vulnerable because you feel like something's wrong with you and it's almost like saying hey look there's nothing wrong with you you've been through a traumatic experience that traumatic experience has certain results on a person that means nothing about you other than you've experienced a traumatic experience and it's going to have some effect and i think this is another important point that i'd like to get across is a lot of people think that uh, a lot of people judge people on their behaviors and if you look at some of the behaviors of of, of some of the vets out there um it would be easy to judge and think they're bad, abusive people. Um, but actually, they're not. These are people with hearts of gold that are just in a lot of pain and don't know how to act um, and often act out. Um, but ultimately, to me, the more extreme a person's behaviour, it's just showing you how much pain they're in. So the worse a person's behaviour, the more pain they're in. Because if they're doing a behaviour that you see as uh, bad behaviour, toxic behaviour, abusive behaviour, the chances are they don't know any different, sadly. It's just learned. It is It's what they've seen. It's what they've learned. Um, and so it's like with the with the soldiers it's, it's it go run so deep um so yeah yeah you know it um it really does make it it difficult when you sort of you you look at it on the bigger picture and with how everything's going sort of going on in the world you know um and like I say, the, the talking and the, you know, the awareness that, that we're building is great. But, you know, if, if, if you are a friend of someone and 
and there is someone that you, you may suspect, maybe that's one thing to look at is actually just how has their behaviour changed, you know? Mm. What are the differences we're noticing here? You know, were they always happy and jolly and now, you know, the, the glass is half empty? Because um, I do, I think, you know, that is... Uh, we do almost sort of act out our inner feelings through our behaviour. Uh, yeah, I think certainly when you when you look at some other conditions like ADHD, is a really easy example. Is you look at it as an attention deficit disorder, so they just need more attention, and well, there's there's no issue there other than you need to give them more attention, and that now it can run a lot deeper than that. But it is that. Um, it's it's, sorry, it's, sorry. it's it's look yeah sorry it's uh you know it's it's looking at what what the behavior highlights you know what what the underlying ish, issue is to it you know um like you say we, we don't just choose to behave a certain way or you know maybe your behavior changes and you're perceived to be a nasty person or untrustworthy or whatever the case may be people don't make the choice to I'm going to change my behaviour and be really untrustworthy. There's, you know, there has to be a reason to it, you know? Yeah, and a, a lot of people can mistake that from if a person's got low self-esteem, which often vets end up with, is they they don't have much respect for self. And I, I, I do find with, with vets it's slightly different because they've always got their discipline. So on, on the being tidy, it's like they're almost, there's still that, regimental side to them that they'll never lose which i think is brilliant um but it's like they can't have that discipline with their own mind or with how they're feeling Be partly because they don't understand it but um yeah it, it's right with uh, just going into the last break so uh, keep listening and we'll speak to you on the other side of the break A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Own Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Own Times endeavor. Host your show with Own Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy. And you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hey, 
Okay, welcome back. So just handing over to Adam for a minute. Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, it's, uh, I, I just sort of wanted to say a little bit more about, you know, sort of these, these actual events um, in, in themselves. And, you know, it's, it's not always the, the bombs going off or, or the car crashes. Um, I was recently fortunate enough, I uh, took part in an evening where I was giving Reiki treatments to um, lots of nurses at a, a local hospital um, mm. just to just to give something back and you know it was uh, for them it was a bit of pamper time um, sort of thing um, which you know it, it really was uh, a, a great event um, but talking to lots of them afterwards and very much is you know they're sort of almost asking the questions how can I deal with this and 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 leave work and not have it lingering you know the for some of them they you know they they're seeing death and, and that sort of thing on a daily basis and you, you can feel it while you're giving them Reiki that they're holding on to this big ball of stuff and it's yeah you know, for for so many of them it's you know it's not a, a traumatic event per se to them but actually just seeing that day in day out and it's you know it, it has that wearing effect and that mm. actually it starts to you know almost rub off as such and then yeah um one one of my clients danielle she, she she's a nurse um and she's recently been promoted and one of her she has a larger role within within the ward or the unit that she works in and something that she's bringing back in um as as a as a tool is is debriefing so when they go through a traumatic experience and um i mean whether it's working in if midwives you're receiving babies um or, or working in trauma units or intensive care it's it's having that time after an experience to turn around and say actually do you know what even though I've had years of training in that moment, I was scared out of my wits and I didn't know what to do with myself. I was sad, I was scared, I was angry, I was all over the place, but I managed to hold it together and I'm really proud of myself. And to be able to even just use a tool like that to have the debriefing to say, how did you feel about that situation? could be so useful because it's something that we use within our lives if we come up, come up against a situation that we're not sure about or there's some fear up when most cases there'll be fear <laughs> around something um, but I think it's a real useful tool and again it, it showed me the amazement the amazing thing that I, I had helped one of, or one of my clients had dealt with something um, in, in a clinic and then gained the passion to actually try and bring those emotional tools into the NHS and it literally it, it lit me up and it's why we do what we do because you see people totally crash through sort of things that they're struggling with or, or disorders or whatever it be and then try and make such a difference for everybody else. Um, and I think that's why we've got a passion for this because there's there are so many people out there that sort of need the help and as I was sort of touching on earlier it's great to talk about it and get people aware um, because a lot of people don't want to talk about it and they feel vulnerable um, but then it's about sort of taking action and saying to these people look it, it it's not looking good from from how it is to, to leave something as it is or to just use uh, sort of like a chemical drug or even a uh, like alcohol or, or many other drugs that I'm sure um, they form addictions when, when you're in that kind of low space as, as we were saying about behaviors a lot of people in normal life would certainly wouldn't have an addiction because when you look at it it's it, ultimately it's it's self-harming really it's uh, and it's trying to replace a, a feeling of not feeling good so um yeah it's about sort of very much taking action now and saying look let's try anything um 
if, if there's some, something out there that, that is is gaining uh, traction on, on proof and things like that, give it a try. Um, and I, I, again, I, it's a saying that I, I love Penny's always used throughout her trainings is, um, don't believe what I say, go and test it. And it every single time it's proved that what Penny has been talking about is completely real and what I love about it is it's like even if there could be say 20% of you says oh yeah yeah I believe that and you're walking away and 80% goes no that can't be possible and you try it and it's possible and you go oh oh Penny was right and it is it's one of those things it's like don't don't believe a word we say like try it like yeah. test us um, and, and and test other people that are sort of saying I, I I know very much in in the states there's sort of body soul breath work is is the sort of the closest to breath for life um but yeah i mean it's it's a fantastic tool that so many people could benefit from and and gain some understanding um i think there's especially there's a lot of children as well that we we almost forget about um because Again, the way the, the way that people talk about it is very much about sort of coping with it, or, or, or finding strategies. And it, for me, from the experience that I've received, it's like everything on an emotional level can be reversed. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's it's important. You you have to do something. You know. Um, I mean, for us, you know, every day of the week, it's, it's breath for life, breath work, because it's, you know, in my opinion, probably the most effective tool for dealing with emotions and, and the root causes of the mm. issues. But it's it's do something, find something, you know, whether it be bringing in a, a work strategy where you have debriefings so that you can actually leave it at the door when you walk out. You know, for me, I will always use energetic tools, visualizations that yeah. sort of thing um but it is it's, it's do something you know because yeah. and, and and this is what we say when when we mean you know we're talking about it's great but you need to do something you know we're never poo-pooing the people that are starting to talk about it and make noise that's great yeah i think it's a really important stage you know um the, I, I i i talk about i've tried talk therapies uh, and they didn't work for me and that doesn't and by that i don't mean they don't work for people. Um, I think they are very important. And as Adam said, we're not here to poo-poo anything else because I think everything in place has its has its place and can be effective. It's just we're 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 coming from a, a different view, and it is very much on personal experience. And I didn't realise when I tried breath for life breath work just just how effective it was. Um, and I know that I've, I've had clients say um, they were sceptical and it, 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 one, one that sort of made me laugh is I, I, had, a, I had a fireman in and he said he di didn't, didn't, didn't really feel much through the hour and 45 minute session although it did feel like a pan attack, pan panic attack all the way through and I thought well that's really interesting because when you look at something that obviously I mean, if you if if you got to run into a burning building, you're suppressing fear like there is no tomorrow. So I thought, well, if you open your emotional box, what's what's likely to come out? And I thought, well, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be fear. So he may not have felt as though he had dealt with much, but during that breath work, I would suggest to him that he dealt with an hour and forty five minutes of the fear that he'd been suppressing all the time, and. The change from just one session was incredible, and uh, uh, regular sessions, vast improve, improvement every time. Um, and I think that's that that's what I love about it is the the reward of being able to work with people like that. And I, I enjoy working with all all my clients, but some of the stories that these people have and your heart does go out to them and, and, and again it's what ignites my passion because it's like right well we need to do something about it because 
We've been talking about it for way too long and we need to just start putting stuff, more stuff out there. Um, I've found a great increase since um, having my article in the magazine and that's obviously drawn a lot of people in. So, And I'm finding that there's definitely a, a I wouldn't say more people waking up, but there's more people that are sort of passionate. They're not taking. Yeah, there's sort of there's big shifts happening. I think yeah, all over yeah, the world. A, you know, people are starting to open their eyes and rub their eyes, and whether that be in a actually this aspect of the world isn't right, or that aspect of the world isn't right, or on a more personal and no, let's let's start evolving. Let's start working to that best version of self. I think there are lots more people starting to do that and I think in some ways that's probably where we are getting so much more sort of publicity and noise made about all of the sort of the you know the mental health spectrum and you know for for me the mental health and emotional health run side by side and yeah absolutely lots and yeah. lots more coming out about that and and that sort of thing and you know so it is great and I think yeah progressively albeit maybe slowly we are starting to go in in the right direction with this sort of stuff yeah absolutely and i think in in many ways as i was saying earlier you look at sort of climate change it's we are very much waking up to the realization that we've perhaps taken a, a few wrong turns along the way and without beating seven billion people up um we're we're, we're not going to change anything by doing that it's a case of going right okay well it's not about blaming the generation before or the generation before that. It's about coming together, finding a solution, finding effective ways of dealing with the issues that we're faced with in today's world, and and doing it with fun and uh, and joy, um, because I think that's a lot of it. What what stops the change? Um, it's the stigma around things. It, it's the way it's almost like made out to be a huge thing and then that makes people feel vulnerable so then they don't stand up and it, it, it's about saying hey look we, we've got issues here and it doesn't matter which ones of us have which issues but we have some solutions here and maybe we should all sort of embrace it um, and I think with with mental health especially it's like for me um, I don't necessarily like the term mental health, but only because of the word mental. Because your first association when someone says mental is they're crazy, they're a lunatic. Um, and that's just not true. To me, a far, great, far more graceful and realistic term would um, be uh, emotional... Um, well, it's just emotional imbalance, you know. Imbalance, I mean, it, yeah, thank you. Um, because it just means that your emotions are imbalanced and you don't quite know how you feel. And that's something that I've experienced. When I was in my depression and anxiety, it was kind of like I'd have thought forms that I wouldn't repeat because people would think you were crazy. But when you're in that vibration and you're in that, space of, uh, of personal darkness you do have these thoughts and you do have those things and it's not being ashamed of it and it's being real about it and saying just because you had those thoughts once it doesn't mean you're crazy your brain has millions of thoughts most of them completely random and not logical or, or, or make sense you it's it just is what it is your brain's just a computer and will come up with strange things so again it's like not, not judging people and not making it a big deal because I think in making it a big deal people shy away and it's yeah it's about saying well it is no big deal there is an absolute there's a logical reason why a lot of people go through it and it's called life yeah yeah and it's because we're living in a world that sort of isn't as loving and community and coming together as we would we would like. It's a little bit rat race and dog eat dog and um, I'll eat you because you'll eat me type attitude and it's it, nothing seems to quite fit. So, but that change is coming where people are saying we actually have to all take responsibility and not blame 
and not judge. Um, it, you should never look down on anybody unless you're helping them up. Um, nobody is any better than anybody else. No title, no money, no nothing can make you better than anybody else. We're all human, we're all pink inside and we're all equal. And it is about coming together and helping those that need help. Um, because often the ones that need help are only in that situation because they've been helping others for a long time and they've forgotten about themselves. Yeah. And it's a big key thing within PTSD. These are people that are helping hundreds, thousands, millions of people and yet they're the ones that are sort of suffering. Um, so it, unless there's something you'd like to add to that, Adam, it's been a really interesting show. Um, if you feel inspired, get in touch. Um, any organisations that are interested, um, please do get in touch. Um, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you next week. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. See you all next week.